It's been two years since an East Tennessee family says their son, Matthew Heath, was wrongfully detained in Venezuela and labeled a spy. Marine Corps veteran Matthew Heath arrested in September 2020. His family says he's being used as a political prisoner and a pawn. WAT 6 on your side reporter Paige Weeks joins us now with the latest on Heath's case and how his family is dealing with this anniversary. Paige. Lori and Bo, the Heath family says it's been two years of torture, worry, and little to no progress. Despite contacting several U.S. government officials and working with advocates both here and in Venezuela, Heath's family says he remains out of reach and on the knife's edge. Today is two years and three days. That's how long Matthew Heath's family says the U.S. veteran has been imprisoned, tortured, and held as a political hostage in Venezuela. Two years of lost family time, lost time with his son. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult period for us. In addition to being starved, electrically shocked, beaten, and suffocated, Heath's family says the veteran recently attempted suicide. He remains in a psychiatric ward in a Venezuela military hospital. He is currently stable, but remains on a knife edge. This month also marks two years of seemingly fruitless efforts on the part of Heath's family. This, as his family members say, they still haven't received any real help or answers from the U.S. government. We've seen essentially no progress since the spring. Rutherford is referring to March of this year when Representative Roger Carstens was able to return from Venezuela with two unjustly detained American citizens. Certainly we're happy to see anyone come home from any detention. But it would certainly be nice also to see more people come home in that process. As Heath's family members demand answers in progress, one woman remains in the center of the situation, Matthew's mother, Connie. I don't even know myself anymore. Every day, 24 hours is for Matthew. Her demand is simple. I want the president to bring my son home, do whatever it takes to talk to Madero, to give him anything. We don't have anything in this United States that's worth my son. I just want him brought home. Now, Matthew's story has been told several times over the past two years, both on the local and national level. His uncle says it's because the family wants to make sure Matthew's name and the concept of hostage and wrongful detainees stays in the news as much as possible. Lori. Paige, thank you so much. And you can follow Matthew's story on Twitter. That's where his mother, Connie, posts updates every day. We're told the family does get a short phone call with Matthew once a week.